and partial asset name is still not found. Now the full asset name. Boom. We got it to work. We are reading this file, not from the Dart code, but using our C++ library. All right, let's start a new Flutter project and I'm going to name it Flutter FFI. Let's open up the project with VS Code. The first thing I'm going to do is to replace the main Dart file with a very simple UI. Let's quickly go over what it does. It starts with the usual main function and stateless widget for the materials app. Then we have a stateful widget called load file page where we define load asset method that for now simply returns a text. Our goal will be to implement loading a file from C++ library using Dart's FFI. The UI consists of an input text field for the asset name, a button, and the output text. All right, let's run this and see what it does. So when I input some text and click the load button, it will display this placeholder text for now. Let's now add our C++ library here, shall we? I'm going to create source folder and let's start with a simple header file. Since we are going to return the file content as bytes, let's define byte array struct that stores an array of uint8 and the length. One thing to note is that FFI only supports C functions and not C++, so we need to expose C function interface and not C++. That's why we can't use C++ vector or string class and need to explicitly define its C struct. Then let's define our API to be exposed to Flutter and there will be two functions. The first is read file that takes a string and returns a byte array. Again, we can't use string class, so the input argument needs to be a character pointer instead. The second one will be free bytes function to free byte arrays data. Now, here's the crucial part. We must make sure to interpret this header file as C and not C++. For that, we wrap our code around with these directives. This is a must step if you want to link against C++ library. All right, now that we have our header file, let's create our C++ implementation. Let's name it load.cc file and let's place it in the same folder as the header file. For this, I'm just going to copy and paste code here, but essentially it does what it should do. For read file function, it reads the file using C++ fstream and copies the data to our C byte array struct. For free bytes function, it simply deallocates the memory as it should. Okay, now we need to compile the code into a dynamic library. I'm going to create a build script that does this. Let me copy and paste the build script here and let's go over the script. First, notice how we create three different directories, macOS, iOS, and simulator. This is because we need to compile different binaries for each of these platforms. For macOS, the build script is simple and is what you would expect. We are invoking G++ to build a shared library with load.cc file and output to the macOS folder. For iOS and simulator, we just need to pass one more parameter during the build stage. And this is this isis root argument specifying which SDK to use. For iPhone, this is the path to the iPhone SDK here, and we are going to output this to the iOS folder. Oh, by the way, I'm going to share everything in the description below, so you don't need to copy this down. Similarly, for the simulator, we specify the SDK for the simulator and output to the simulator folder. We have another command here at the bottom, but let's comment it out for now. And when we run this build script, it successfully built the libraries and saved to each of the folders that we specified. All right, now let's go back to our build script and uncomment the last line. What it does is to create a Dart binding from our header file. We could do this manually if you want to, but I'd rather not. Instead, we'll utilize FFI gen package to do this automatically for us. All we need is a config.yaml file for that. So let's create this file and I'm going to paste the config here. It's really not that bad for our example. 
We specify the name of the binding class in Dart, specify where to output the binding code, and specify the entry header file. Not the implementation file, but just the header file. That's it. Now let's make sure we have the FFI gen package installed. So go to the terminal, install the package globally, then let's rerun the build script. Awesome. Now we have the binding file generated next to our main.dart file. As you can see here, this is auto-generated and provides Dart class so that we can easily call our native functions written in C++. Finally, let's integrate our binding into our code base. In main.dart file, let's import the binding file and let's modify our load asset method. The first thing to do is to get the file path for the asset. This requires some work, so let's assume we have a function that does this. Then we want to load the file using our C++ read file function. So let's instantiate our asset loader class, which takes in a dynamic library. For that, we will use dynamic library.open method and specify the name of the library we created, which is going to be libload.dylib. We will need to make sure we include the library in the app, so let's mark it as to do. And finally, we call the read file function with the asset path as the argument. Now, the issue here is that C++ library takes in char pointer as an argument, which translates to pointer of type char in Dart. To cast string to pointer, we first need to call to native UTF method, which requires FFI package. So let's add the FFI package, and now we can import this method. We still need to do one more conversion, which requires casting to the pointer using cast method. All right, we still got more work to do, so stay with me. Now we need to load the byte array into string. And for that, we call as typed list method and provide the size of the array. Finally, we use utf.decode method to convert to string. Okay, so far so good. We now have two more things to take care. The first thing is to get asset path. This, I already have the code, so let's copy here. We are seeing a lot of errors here because this requires path provider package. Let's install the package and fix the errors. The join function requires path package, so let's install that too. All right, let's briefly go over what it does. In Flutter, Asset is not provided as a file, but instead as an archive. Hence, there exists no path for each asset. So we need to create one ourselves. To do that, we will essentially save the assets data into a file in the apps document directory. If this asset file doesn't already exist in the folder, we will create one by loading its binary data using root bundle and save it as a file. Then we return this path. Now, this will create the file for us so that our read file function can actually read this. Since this is an async function, let's add await and async keywords here. All right, we just did this one, so let's remove this. And we are down to the last one, which is to actually add our C++ library into the app. For that, we open up the Xcode. I'll do the Mac OS app as an example but it should work the same for iOS or simulator. When you open the Xcode project, select Runner here and go to General tab. Scroll down to the Frameworks and simply drag and drop our C++ library here. This is for macOS app, so make sure to select the macOS version of the library. Now head over to Build Phases tab and remove our library we just added from Link Library section. I'm a complete novice when it comes to Xcode, so maybe I'm doing something silly here, but this is what worked for me. If there is a better way, please leave it in the comment. All right, are we done yet? Let's test our app. If I were to input some random text here, it crashes. Oh well, let's add some error handling here with a try and catch statement. Okay, there's one more thing. We need to add an asset so that we can actually open it. For that, let's go to popspec.yaml file and 
this is where we are going to declare our asset. Well, let's first create the asset. I'm going to create asset folder and write some text here. In this simple tutorial, we are using a simple text file here. But in practice, this asset would probably be some binary file that has to be opened by the C++ library. Okay, this should be good enough. So let's add this asset in popspec.yaml file and test again. For assets that do not exist, the app handles it as expected. For the asset that actually exists, um, the app still can seem to work. All right, our favorite time, the debugging session. Let's break at this line here and see what's happening. Ah, I see. The asset name contains the slash character and hence our file path points to a non-existent directory. I'm a lazy guy, so I'm going to fix it by just using the base name here. This is not the most elegant fix, but hey, it will do the job for this tutorial. All right, let's rerun the app. Random asset is not found and partial asset name is still not found. Now the full asset name Boom! We got it to work. We are reading this file, not from the dot .code, but using our C++ library. Okay, folks. Hopefully this was helpful for you guys and hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time and happy coding.